patient I know recently told me, Haley, over the last five years, I've experienced growing, debilitating pain in my jaw. I could barely chew food or speak. I learned of a surgery that could treat me, but it was only performed by a few select doctors in the US. I found a surgeon who could do the procedure, but they required upfront payment. My insurer approved the procedure, but said they would reimburse me after the surgery happened. The surgery was $80,000. I didn't have that kind of money for an upfront payment. So my mom volunteered to loan me her retirement savings until the reimbursement check came through. I was hesitant, but I had in writing from the insurer that I was approved. So I had the surgery. After the fact, I received the bill, or the reimbursement check, for $2,000 for my $80,000 procedure. My mother's life savings are gone. Unfortunately, this is the reality of many patients who seek access to high cost treatments in the US. Medical bills are the number one cause of bankruptcies and 55% of people can't afford an unexpected medical expense. Last year, I started a company with my co-founders, Alex and Malcolm, who experienced similar health insurance denials. Over the past 12 months, we've helped over 200 patients navigate these difficult situations. I've personally written over 50 health insurance appeals, and I've seen everything. I am angry. Insurers mislead patients and discourage them from standing up for themselves. There is a major problem with our system. But I'm also hopeful. Less than 1% of patients appeal their health insurance denials, yet 40% of those appeals are successful. We've won patients over $1 million in coverage, and many times all that's needed is a patient submitting the appeal. And you might be thinking, ah, I've got a good plan, I'm on top of things, I don't, I'm not gonna have to have this issue. But this is the insurer's game, and they're experts at it. Mark, another patient I worked with, got approved for a surgery and spent 10 hours on the phone attempting to find out how much he would be responsible for. The insurer said he was approved and not to worry about it. After the surgery, he received his bill for $57,000. Mark appealed, and the insurer kept saying, we're reviewing it, we're reviewing it, we'll get back with you. Months later, they claim they never received the appeal in the first place. This highlights two major problems. One, lack of transparency. Are you responsible for a $500 deductible or a $50,000 medical bill? This isn't a question you should have to ask. And number two, mismanagement of the appeals process. Insurers make tons of mistakes, from losing your appeals to giving you the wrong information. It is not acceptable. Another story comes from Sarah, whose insurance reviewer denied her complex laparoscopy for endometriosis and claimed it was not medically necessary. Sarah researched the reviewer and learned they did not even have a medical degree, and they were saying what healthcare she should get access to. She appealed and won. After the fact, her insurer sent her a letter. The letter said that they had made a mistake and she was responsible for paying back most of the money. No, I'm not joking, this happened. This highlights two additional problems. One, unqualified reviewers who either don't have medical degrees or are not specialists in the healthcare they're approving or denying. And two, requesting retroactive payments. This one's so egregious, I don't even know what to say. I've seen these horror stories happen time and time again. Patients' life savings wiped out through no fault of their own. And why is this happening? A misalignment of incentives. Insurers' profits are directly impacted by patient reimbursements. And insurers employ tactics like poor customer service and claims mistakes in order to discourage payouts. Have you ever wondered why your insurance portal makes you feel like you time traveled back to the era of dial-up internet? <laughs> I don't even know what dial-up internet is. 
But I do know a stalling tactic when I see it. And some may claim this is addressed with insurance competition, but that doesn't tell the full story. Let's talk about self-funded plans. Are you on your company's health insurance plan? Then you are likely on what's called a self-funded plan. 65% of covered employees are. This means although you may have an insurance card that says Aetna or United Healthcare or another insurance company, those are just the administrators. They are not actually paying your medical bills. Instead, your employer is. That's right, your employer is paying for your medical services. Now, if you're the employer whose main motive is profit, why would you select an insurance plan that has high payouts if you are the one who ultimately has to pay those payouts? Now, I'm simplifying the system to make a point, but you can see how the incentive structure is complicated and misaligned. And because of that, insurance competition is less of a driving market force than you would think. And things aren't getting better. Denial rates are increasing, particularly for low-income patients. Insurers are being incredibly vague about their processes, and they're now using AI to deny more and more claims. There are some regulations, such as the No Surprises Act and the Transparency and Coverage Rule, but insurers are straight up ignoring these regulations. Insurers are getting away with approving you for a surgery, but then refusing to tell you how much you're responsible for. Insurers are getting away with having an outdated provider directory and claiming it's your fault that you don't know that their physician is in network. Insurers are getting away with giving you the wrong information and then afterwards saying, oops, good luck with that $50,000 medical debt. You should have read our footnote on page 176 of the hidden plan document we never sent you. And even when patients realize insurers are breaking the rules, 86% of patients have no idea who to, file a, a, who to file a report with. You have more rights than you think you do. Insurers should not be doing these things. In order for this to change, we need legislators to get more awareness to what is happening. Two ways to do this are through filing regulatory complaints and posting on social media. For filing regulatory complaints, I'll be posting a link at the end of the session with more information on how to do this. For posting on social media, explain your situation and tag your congressional representative, your insurer, and the regulatory body that holds your insurer accountable. If enough people hear what's happening, change will come. Now, hopefully none of you are in these horrible situations today, and I hope you never are, but if you do have a high cost medical, medical procedure in the future, Get in writing exactly how much you are responsible for. Be proactive to avoid ending up in these situations. And if you are in these situations, you can win. In fact, we've won over 90% of our medical necessity appeals. And although we do provide insurance expertise, I truly believe our biggest value is in encouraging patients to appeal and fight back. Jane's story didn't end with losing her mother's retirement savings. She appealed and won back $75,000. Mark, who was on a self-funded plan, complained to his employer, who then talked with his insurer, who then found his appeal and approved it. Sarah filed a complaint with her state regulatory body, who promptly told her insurer they could not request money back from her. These patients won because they fought back. Although I would never wish these situations on anyone, they could happen, and they could happen to you. And if they do, appeal and fight back. No decision is final. Insurers will make it difficult, but if you have a good reason for what you're doing and your healthcare team supports you, your chances of success are actually pretty high. There is hope. Don't take no for an answer. Thank you.